This is my Zod Drift, and as of all my builds, it features a flight controller running on enough, as well as a GPS unit for a turn home, a long range receiver, and of course, FPV equipment. In this video, I'm going to very quickly run through all the steps it took to build this aircraft, and then at the end, I'll show you some flight footage. So this build started with the PMP version of the Drift. Now, despite the fact that then it came with a ESC pre-installed, the first thing I did was remove it and replace it with a 35 amp little b ESC instead. The reason for doing this was simply because the stock Zod ESC had a low voltage cutoff of 5.6 volts, whereas the little b can be run down as low as 5. The ESC was then installed in the belly compartment of the fuselage and the wires were routed up to the top compartment where they were then soldered to a Matek F411 WSE flight controller. A XC60 lead was also soldered to the flight controller at the same time, and this was routed down to the battery compartment. Having soldered pin headers to the flight controller, hooking up the aileron and elevator servos was a simple case of plugging the wires in. The elevator servo wire was a little bit long to start with, so I did have to shorten it. I then installed the receiver. This was a TBS Crossfire Nano receiver, and it was installed in the belly compartment alongside the ESC. Its antenna was installed at the rear fuselage beside the motor mount, and to connect it to the receiver I simply made a small hole here using a wood skewer. The wires in the receiver were then routed up to the top compartment, but they were then soldered to the UART 2 pads on the flight controller. On the UART 1 pads I then connected the GPS unit. This was a Matek MAQ5883, which I had in my spares bin from a previous build. The unit itself was glued into the top compartment lid, which I did have to modify slightly to allow the unit to fit. It was then concealed using the black square sticker thing that comes included in the Zod Drift kit. With that done, I then installed the main FPV camera. This was a Roncam Phoenix 2, which is an excellent camera, but was a little bit too big to fit through the hole in the nose of the fuselage. I simply remedied that by cutting away the foam at the nose, and then installed the camera using a basic 3D printed mount. Wires from the camera were then routed down the side of the battery compartment and up to the flight controller, where they were then soldered to the C1 pads. The video transmitter for this build was a TBS Unified Pro V3, and this was installed into a custom 3D printed mount. A hole was then made into the canopy where the mount was then installed, and then onto the SMA pigtail a Luminate Axie antenna was attached. The wires of the VTX were then routed through the battery compartment and up to the flight controller, where they were then soldered into place. Now because the Matek F411 WSC flight controller supports dual cameras, I opted to put a Runcam Split 3 Nano on the tail. Installed in a custom 3D printed mount, the camera was secured to the vertical stabiliser facing forwards, and the wires were then routed along the tail boom. The tail boom was then installed into the fuselage and locked into place, and the push rod was connected to the servo in the belly compartment. The wires from the camera were then routed up through the belly compartment and up to the flight controller, where they were then soldered into place. With all that done, completing the build was then just a simple case of installing the spar, attaching the wings, attaching the horizontal stabiliser, connecting the push rod to the elevator horn, and finally attaching the prop. I did also install a small 3D printed plate in the battery compartment as seen here, just to prevent the battery from sliding backwards and forwards throwing off the CG. The battery used was a 3000 milliamp lithium ion battery, and to get the CG just right I did also have to add two small coins to the nose. Now with the physical build complete, all that was left to do was the programming. After connecting the flight controller to my computer via USB, I opened INAF Configurator where I then flashed the correct firmware. I then went to the calibration tab where I then completed the 6 point calibration before then going to the mixer tab where I then set the platform type and mixer preset to airplane and then set the server mixer to look like this. On the outputs tab I then enabled the settings and then reversed any servos that needed reversing before then going to the presets tab where I then selected the airplane general. I then went to the ports tab where I enabled GPS on Europe 1, Serial RX on Europe 2 and Smart Audio on UART 3. On the configuration tab, I then enabled battery and current sensor monitoring, and I set the scale here to 423. I then also enabled GPS with a protocol of U blocks, and then also enabled all these settings. 
On the failsafe tab, I then enabled return to home. And then on the receiver tab, I set the channel map to TAER to match my radio, set the RSSI channel to channel 12, and then set the receiver type to serial and the provider to CRSF. On the modes tab, I then enabled these modes, before then going to the OSD tab, where I programmed my OSD to look like this. And I also took the time to upload a FOM. I then went to the CLI tab, where I copied and pasted these codes, before then typing save and pressing enter. Finally, I then closed down our nav configurator and opened the old heli suite instead, where I quickly changed the low voltage cutoff, enabled the ESC brake, and also changed the motor rotation direction to make sure it was spinning the right way. And that's pretty much it. This was actually a fairly quick and straightforward build. Now here's a wiring schematic for those of you that are interested. And now I'll show you some flight footage. So the maiden was actually almost perfect. The launch was a little bit wild due to me being a little bit aggressive on the sticks to start with. But once I got a feel for the aircraft, I had it quickly flying nice and smooth and steady. One of the things I did at the start was a server water trim, which helped a little to compensate for the drag being caused by the tail camera. I then very quickly tested return to home, which did work, although I did discover how I'd accidentally set the aircraft to land rather than loiter. Now the only real issue I encountered was a problem with the OSD. Certain select features such as altitude and voltage would occasionally disappear and reappear throughout the flight, although oddly this wasn't recorded by my DVR. Instead, the DVR shows the entire OSD disappearing, which is even more strange. My best guess is this is something to do with a PAL NTSC difference between the two FPV cameras, but to be honest, I'm really not sure. Other than that though, everything worked perfectly and the aircraft flew great. I found myself mostly flying through the tail camera feed, which despite having inferior quality to the nose camera, just provided an awesome perspective and was a lot of fun to see. In total, this maiden flight lasted just over 30 minutes, which I think is pretty good considering I wasn't exactly being restrained with the throttle. On a good day, with lots of gliding and maybe some thermals, I reckon that flight time could be doubled, if not more. Now at this point in the video, I have to make a confession. On the second flight of my drift, which was conducted a few days later, things didn't go quite so well. I launched the glider from a clifftop field with the intention to do some coastal flying and possibly some bridge soaring. But just a few seconds into the flight, the aircraft lost all power and I lost the FPV feed. I quickly took off my goggles and caught sight of the glider, just in time to see it glide unpowered over the cliff edge and down to the sea, about 100 feet below. Now annoyingly, that area of coast can't be accessed on foot, and as I don't own a boat, recovering it from the rapidly receding tide just wasn't an option, so I had little choice but to quickly accept that the aircraft was gone for good. Now why the aircraft lost all power so suddenly is a bit of a mystery, but my best guess is that either the flight controller spontaneously died for some reason, or a wire on the DIY lithium-ion battery pack that I had made disconnected. All is not lost though, as the guys at Zod heard about what happened to my drift through Instagram and have generously offered to send me out a replacement totally for free. So whilst my drift is currently adrift out to sea, I have a new one on the way, so expect to see some more flight footage in the near future.